Hey guys, welcome back to the couch. Nathan Gray video here, and it's been a bit since I did one of these talking from the hearts from the couch segment, and I want to just take a moment to finally come out. I didn't ever think I'd be doing this on YouTube, but we're only a couple months away from November election month, and I got to admit to everybody right now, I'm post duopoly. That's right. I'm neither red nor blue. It's not a binary choice. I'm coming out today against the oligarchy, against the duopoly, as a post-duopoly voter. And I know that in November, I'm not voting for Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. And today, I urge you to do the same. So how did I get here, you might ask? Well, like many of you, perhaps you found yourself to be a progressive leftist for all your life. And maybe you are a registered Democratic voter for a long time. And maybe you even participated in many elections thinking you are doing the right thing all along, only to find yourself deceived later on. Generally, I have not been doing stunts here, but, you know. <laughs> maybe you were also part of a revolution like myself when Bernie Sanders came along in 2016 and for the first time started saying, and it seemed to be that he had done things that we'd never seen before in modern politicians. That his actions and his record in office had backed up the things that he spoke out about. And he was the first person saying things like Medicare for all, $15 minimum wage, into wars, in the electoral college. And when Bernie Sanders came to Tulsa and they thought there would be 2,000 or 3,000 people in the audience, but instead, Somewhere near 16,000 people showed up. Well, I was about 30 feet back from the stage. And when Bernie Sanders asked everyone in the audience, are you ready for a revolution? We all screamed, yes, and we meant it. But what he's shown us since then has been only a willingness to play along with the political establishment who frankly stole the election from him. They did admit to it. The DNC did admit to completely running the primaries. And when the big insurrection happened on January 7th, all I could think was that should have been all of us. All of us in America who really believed that we needed to end this two-party system that plays us over and over and over again. And that we were serious about getting into a revolution, a political revolution with Bernie as the leader of it. Well, it turns out he would all go on to tell us to vote for Hillary Clinton, then later Joe Biden, the pure embodiment of it, and now once again with Ms. Harris. Now, like a lot of former Bernie supporters, I've gotten quite used to being called a Trumper, a Russian bot, a spoiler, an election spoiler, but it's not our fault. For those of you who find yourself politically abandoned, who know that we have no actual representation, plenty of taxation, but no political representation in Senate, Congress, the White House, or really anywhere in American politics. Because what they've done along the way is ruin the words, the labels such as progressive, used to mean that you're a little bit more progressive beyond that of your typical liberal and leftist. And the word liberal didn't always seem like a bad word because it's associated the way it's associated now. Liberal meant that you were for liberal policies and liberal governance. That you didn't want the government all up in it, every aspect of your life. That you were against war. That you were for education. And America has always had socialist elements to our government. It's what makes it work so well if someone gets injured in public in a fire truck and an ambulance come to their rescue and take them to the hospital, that's socialism. The public schools, that's socialism. What we're seeing now is socialism for the rich, where the banks get bailed out, the big real estate companies get help, the big airline companies get bailed out, all coming from taxpayer dollars, from our money. So our socialism is socialism for the elites, socialism for the corporations. So they've ruined these terms, these terms that m used to mean something and used to matter, have now practically become bad words. And it's a topsy-turvy world we're living in. In what world is an alleged socialist communist candidate like Harris, as she's called by people on the Republican side, in what world would she be endorsed by Dick Cheney? 
by Nancy Pelosi. And secondly, if you consider yourself a liberal, a leftist, an anti-war person, in what world does a candidate that you support adored by Dick Cheney, by Nancy Pelosi, by George W. Bush? Have you forgotten everything? The truth is, we have. The American media does their best to make us forget everything immediately after it's happened. We are the most propagandized people in the world, but you can't convince us of that. There's no way we'll ever believe it. Which brings me to the downside of what I'm most passionate about regarding YouTube. I would love to be a political news analyst type YouTuber. I think it's fascinating, it's fun, there's always something new to talk about, but every single one of my favorite people have either been demonetized or had stuff taken down, censorship at every level, from the smallest to the biggest ones of them. Some of which, just to name a few, Lee Camp, who used to be on the Russian-owned RT network, he was a stand-up comedian, did a comedic political show, that was totally taken down and banned from YouTube. And, de- and then his new stuff has been demonetized as well. Jimmy Dores had several hits. Russell Brand has been slandered and demonetized. The guys from the Gray Zone, Aaron Maté, Max Blumenthal, Glenn Greenwald. I'm sure Jordan Sheraton with Status Coup has had a few things demonetized or taken down. He exposes plenty of political corruption. And I'm sure Nick Cruz and our friends over at RBN, the Revolutionary Blackout Network, have also seen their share of videos taken down or things being demonetized. Abby Martin, and the list goes on. So do I want to put myself out there only to be a target, not only by social media, but by our government, as well as peers of mine who I know disagree with me? I know there's plenty of people, 49% of this country still believes in either blue versus red. 51% of us, however, have decided to not play along. We're either completely politically jaded, we're registered as independents, or we're maybe among that small percentage who realize that that it's all a game. We're all getting played over and over and over. And that brings me to my final point. We need to stop getting played over and over and over. Every four years, in the in-between time, we can all agree that the president seems like some sort of puppet, some sort of figurehead, but really there's other powers that run this country. People will admit to things like the military industrial complex actually having more control, Vanguard, State Street, BlackRock. They understand, they know these names now, they've heard of these things, but every four years we forget again and we start looking and blaming and yelling at each other. We start unfriending friends. We start discommunicating our family members and these sorts of changes can be permanent. Those sorts of repercussions can be forever. But these political clowns and puppets and characters, they come and go. So we need to stop falling for this. We need to rise up together. And if we're going to vote, vote for somebody else and feel no guilt about it. There's Jill Stein. There's Dr. Cornell West. Ms. De La Cruz. There's plenty of other options. And understand this, that you would not be wasting your vote. You're not anybody's spoiler to support third party to get us away from this messed up duopoly oligarchy system. We have no control right now. Even at a local level, most of our politicians have their interests, whether it's energy companies, big agriculture, foreign investors, APAC, they're a big one. So now we've got to get to a point where we call the existing leaderships and politicians out on this stuff and get in real working people and really ultimately get money out of politics. But that's pretty much wraps up my message. It's to say that I've come out as politically post-duopoly and that despite how much I want to do political YouTubing, you probably won't see much of that here. Where I can, I'll fit the politics in, comments, questions, little slights. But you probably won't see much of that here. If you've ever noticed, Jimmy Dore and them work really hard, really hard, for the amount of viewerships they have. And when he's lucky, he might have 16,000 viewers watching live. But you can click on any big weather YouTuber, meteorologist channel. (laughs) My favorite is Ryan Hall, y'all. Check the link. And they have millions. And they're sometimes in the hundreds of thousands of live viewership talking about the weather, which just goes to show you that with the political stuff, you're pigeonholing yourself and you're fighting an uphill battle. And I forgot to mention Hardlands Media. 
If you've never watched Kit Cabela with Hardlands Media in the mornings, you don't know what you're missing. Check him out. So that wraps it up for me today. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and click the bell notification to get updates on when my new videos are out. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging out and listening. You've been watching Three Points.